Hello, and once more, welcome back to the Be Wise Chronicles. Uh, with me, Clive Davis, and him over there. Alan Rees. How's it going, Al? It's been a minute. Uh, it's been a while, but um, I'm looking forward to liquid gold content. Uh, yeah, well, that's all we bring is, uh, yeah, liquid gold, full to the brim, lip smacking good stuff. So, um, absolutely. So, this time we got a couple of uh, things on the docket, a couple of things that, um, I don't think were were purchased on video cassette in the BY's store, but uh, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're indulging our nostalgia in general. Um, correct, there wasn't they weren't purchased, but um. They come from the same era, because I think these are my choices or my suggestions. And they're, they're organic, because uh, because we, we've we fell into a rut of doing like um, I suppose post Rambo missing in action. Let's go get them back. Films, right? And these are kind of in that. Yeah. one of them, at <clears> least, <throat> and then the other ones kind of related to that in their junior versions, right? Like yeah, a, yeah, a, there, there is junior, that. junior kickstart to the kickstart. The um, I remember these both of them because, um, sorry to interrupt you there. I just realized we should clarify for younger viewers, which I'm sure we have thousands. I'm not talking about kickstart in which, um, you have to, uh um, make the money. No, no, no. I'm talking about original OG Kickstart hosted by Peter Purvis. Which oh, 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 we're going to go down that way. Right, yeah, yeah. Just balance your motorbike. Yeah, yeah. Top show. Again, I, I'm sure I've mentioned this before on here, but if you're in your cups on a Saturday night and looking for some, you know, fun nostalgia, check out old episodes of Junior Kickstart on YouTube. Yeah, where it was 19, 1970s motocross with no health and safety. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. The bikes are bigger than the children on Junior Kickstart. It's quite it's quite the thing to see, it's something you wouldn't see on television nowadays, I don't think. Absolutely, absolutely. Anyway, sorry, Al, I interrupted uh, these these two things that you've uh, kind of... Yeah, fuck you, by the way, for me thinking we watch these two, but yeah, take it away. Not piss off. Uh, no, it's... I was... I. As a family, we were for, we were fortunate. We um, we had Sky TV ah. soon, after, it's soon after it came out. How the other half lives? Uh, I mean, from uh, from my uh, gold plated throne, yes. uh, I watched I watched basically as many kids did. Didn't get up early for school, but on the weekends you got up to the ass crack of dawn. Yeah. And um, so Sky Sky Movies, there was only one channel then, but they would have kids' films on a Saturday morning, you know, starting five, six, seven o'clock or whatever it was. And yeah, I probably watched, I watched, I, I don't know which order we're going to do, but I watched Zits. Right. Probably... Every Saturday for oh, months. Oh, really? I was going to say, you have to get up early on a Saturday morning, because if you didn't, you wouldn't get to see that bloke calling in to tell Five Star that they were shit. <laughs> if you remember that important cultural touchstone of our youth. Um, who yeah, I yeah. that was, uh, Billy on Line 3 or whatever who immediately became a hero to uh, a generation of children, right? No, that was that was going live. Right. Um, hang on, hang on. Oh, fuck, uh, you brought it up now, so I'm going to have to remember it. I can't remember what it was yesterday, but shit, I guess I can remember. <laughs> um, well, I don't 811, 811, 811, 811. There we go. Oh, wow, okay. But I do. Re I remember it being because I remember uh, it was um, what's her face, um... Sarah Green. Yes, yeah, Sarah Philip Green. Greenfield. Yeah, and 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 the guy said, "Yeah, uh, five star. Can you tell me why you're so fucking shit?" 
And then the, <laughs> the line goes dead. And then Sarah Green surprisingly, she says, like, okay, uh, thank you for that. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, or whatever. Uh, but in fairness, she was so calm. And then uh, I think her next gig after going live was uh, Crime Watch. Right. And of course, Ghost Watch. She did all the watches, right? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, because she's no, all you... Because if you remember, famously, she was married to what's his face from Crime Watch? Um, uh, Nick. Um... Yeah, who's also on Ghost Watch. Because that was the thing. They were like the couple, right? Because later on, they did um, Going for Gold as well. Uh, no, no, you're you're mixing up now. Am going I? for gold was was um, Nick Ross. Yeah, him wasn't that who she was married. No, to? she wasn't. No, she wasn't uh, riding the hobby horse with him. Oh, okay. Um, but also, was it Anne Diamond and Nick something on ITV? Oh, yes. They were they were together too. Yeah, it was. It was a will. They, it was a the Fox and Mulder of its time. Because we all used to fancy on Diamond a bit. Uh, yeah, I tell you one thing that you're talking about Fox and Mulder. Julian Anderson looks better now than ever. Is that right? Oh, uh, yeah, let's move on. Okay. I, I'm <laughs> sensing that you may have uh, met her in real life, Alan. No, I haven't met her in real life ish. But um, yeah, uh, good looking woman. All right. All right. So, um, so you started talking about zits, so let's do zits then. So yeah, fuck that that amazes me. So you watch this thing. I mean, I've only I'd never actually seen this before. This is my one sole viewing of this film, and it was more than enough. More than enough. Um, zits, aka Spy Trap from nineteen eighty nine, uh, eight, right? Um, yes. Both these from eighty eight, directed by Arthur Sherman, written by Robert Littell. What's all this about then, Al? And did you did you like this? I mean, because the thing is, people forget when you're children, you watch shit over and over again. It's not a sign that you like it necessarily. It's, it's a sign you don't have. I um, uh, my 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 memory is really good and really bad in uh, some aspects. And this one, there were there were there were a few things that I forgot about this film. But the um. Like there's a quote halfway through, which we will get to, but I remember that vividly, and I think I still quote that to this day. And yeah, nobody gets it. So um, it was it was a nice trip down memory lane. Okay, so you were ten or something, right? When this aired on Sky, maybe ten, eleven. Uh, so we would have come out. What was it? Eighty eight. Um, I would have been. And I think I think we had Sky in ninety one. We remember last year in primary school, so it would have been nineteen ninety one, ninety two. We were in that area, so yeah, um, yeah. Let's say I was eleven. Okay, watching. because now now it would be highly inappropriate at all. But I'm just wondering if, as as a child of around the same age, would the character of Denver Duck as played by Daniel Duclos, constantly talking about sex and the size of her breasts and stuff like that. Would that have excited the young preteen you, another girl of your age, being quite, um, you know, open? Uh, about well, it's just weird now watching it. I mean, <laughs> but, I mean, the 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 shit that she brings up in this film is. Um, it's quite. It's it actually it's quite surprising. <laughs> I was quite oh, taken aback uh, by yeah what they were thinking. Uh, it's all adults who've written and directed this film, right? Uh, I will say. I will say, whoever was the screenwriter just thought, oh, do you know what? I remember when I was a teenager and I was clumsy and stuff. Oh, do you know what? I'm just gonna write like a passport of what you should or shouldn't do sexually. To thirteen-year-old boys and girls, and yeah, you just shoehorn that in. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I mean, if you're done, if you were trying to think, even though it strikes us as kind of weird and inappropriate and weird now, grow titties, grow. Um, it's, it's like, I suppose that might be us today being a little bit too cautious, over cautious around. I suppose it does make sense that yes. 
a, a, a precocious girl of this age would be probably talking about things like that and asking her male friends, do you masturbate? And I, we had our own show, you show me all, I'll show you all. Our, we had our own little encounter down the lane. I remember at a, at a certain point in our youth. Um, so, <laughs> no, it wasn't me and you showing each other, although I'm sure we've seen our bits uh, plenty. Yeah. Of I mean, they look very different now. Or Scar. No, no, I mean, I, no, no, it wasn't you, but I remember, I, I remember his name. <laughs> I'll never forget it. Um, he was yeah. only 25. I was only 10. Um, but... But you know what I mean? It's it's not necessarily. It's kind of it should it shouldn't really set alarms bell ringing. We're kind of a bit oversensitive, especially in the English speaking world, uh, UK and America about this stuff nowadays. I think so. It's it's not really that problematic, anything. But it seeing it, it I will would, say, they, they I will put say, put it, yeah, they wouldn't put this in a kids' film now, would they? No, I, but I my my memory, I remember. You know, obviously, I vividly remember the film. Um, like them talking about masturbation. No, I couldn't. I didn't remember that. That kind of, I kind of glossed over that memory. But the way she was so gregarious actually made an imprint. I remember there was a quote unquote hot girl in it. Mm. I remember a couple of quotes, etc. But I didn't remember. I didn't. Or maybe yeah. At that age, you know, I was watching it when I was what. 11, 12, whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. yeah, a lot of that shit was just going over my head. But right. I remember right. I remember the hot girl, yes. Yeah, no, no, to be fair, uh, yeah, if I was that, uh, like, I remember seeing, like, um, it was suburban commando or something later on and taking a fancy to the daughter in that. But, you know, when I was around the same age, right? So it's not, it's not a problem. Then I fancy I, I just fancy the nanny in that, the one with the moustache. Oh, I don't I don't remember. No, that's Hulk. You're talking about. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, there's anyone who made um, and to be fair to that actress, she actually does quite a good job of doing something kind of awkwardly written by older people to put in her. Like she she, she actually gives a. All the kids are actually pretty good in this film, I would say, as kid actors go, right? Uh, I will say that the writing was, you know, for, for when it comes to, you know, spy films, action films, etc., with kids, she did a great job of her material. Yeah. But I, I, felt it, I felt it laborious about the main yeah. kid boy character going on about his fucking zits all the time. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't work so well. No, and and also the guy with the fucking puppet. Oh yes, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Yes, I I I can only say that that is less than humongous. Al, that's what that is. Uh, that was. Uh, I mean, after the third time, I'm like, did the script? Did the director goes, yeah, we should just fucking ditch that. Yeah, it disappears. Because that, 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 that was just uh, astronomically bad. For for fans of um, 80s montage and theme tune music as well, there's some there's some crackers here. There's that go for it theme tune. And because they they have a band, don't they? They have a they they're in so yeah, sorry. So the, the plot is basically their music teacher, as played by Maria Saldez, uh, who apparently is quite an accomplished stage actress. I didn't know this. So for reasons I think we still don't actually find out. She's she has an acid attack, right? Someone throws an acid in her eyes and blinds her. Yeah, she gets mugged. Allegedly, she gets mugged on the way home from school or whatever, and she gets acid. Yeah. Which to me, acid is uh, destructive to all organs, not just the eyes. But her right. face looks like an immaculate. Well, clearly it was a good shot, right? Um I mean yeah. Both I, eyes. I just think it's a very early incel incident, right? The the acid in the face thing is a very incel kind of thing to do. But anyway, she's blinded, so the kids decide they want to donate to the fund to give her some new eyes. I think that's how because it she doesn't have insurance. health insurance because she's that's not right. a property because she's in America. Um, 
where people don't do such things, right? Because it's 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 goddamn commie socialism, Alan. Yeah, such a thing. Uh, oh, tell me about it. Yeah, I <laughs> I, I bang on that drum every day. So, um, yeah. So they decide. I mean, of all the things they come like, how could we make money? And they have a couple ideas. Um, and then they decide. Oh, I know. Because they're all Washington kids as well. I suppose that's important. It's, it's all Georgetown, Washington. They're like, yeah. Well, well, well first off, they did, they, in fairness, and they did do a benefit concert. That's that's right. Yes, because they're musicians. They did a, yeah, they did a benefit concert, and I think they raised a whopping twenty six dollars or something. Right. So they're all like, one's a congressman, and one's an army brother. That that so in the Washington. So they get the idea. Let's sell secrets to the Soviets to raise money. <laughs> Yeah, because that's the natural progression from um, <laughs> music concert, war crimes. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So, so they befriend. And this is this is this is the eighties where, I mean, the Cold War wasn't what it was, but it was still a thing. Yeah, yeah. It's still a year before the war comes down. I, it's interesting. Both of these are very much, I, yeah, from the tail end of the the Cold War, right? The, Regan. Yeah, because I, I, I mean, and I, I was a communist from uh, Sam Pimsign, West Wales. So, yes. yeah, yeah, that's what I we, chose. The, but we both. stopped dead on 1989. As soon as the wall, the first brick hit the ground, we became... Yeah, when, 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 when Hasselhoff finished his song from the wall... <laughs> we saw the error of our ways, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The heart the of our guiding light. Yeah, we thought, what's what's with this shit socialism? No, 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 no. Listen to this man who has a talking car. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, bang on. So, Absolutely. yeah, so anyway, they decide, so they befriend this kind of idiot secretary who works at the Soviet embassy, uh, as played by Elia Baskin, who was a very familiar face like i've seen him in a million things right i think he's no, the it's... most familiar actor in the whole kind of yeah so i think they probably spent the budget on getting him because he's been in uh well he's the go-to russian actor from mid 80s onward i think yeah he's in so many things i think he's actually a uh, latvian i think but um okay you know, most most people don't know Latvia from. Um, think of something amusing. Uh, Latvia from Belarus, Ukraine La from Cafe Latte. There, there we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You could, you could, you could be spilling your coffee in Rome. Yeah, everyone's rolling around in front of their computers right now, laughing at that. So we'll give him a few seconds to calm down. Absolutely. Grow, titties, grow. So um yeah, so um and yeah, so they send they sell him photos of like basically toys that they've made and told them that they're super weapons being made by the US and then he's sent them back to his and then of course the Pentagon, whoever find out about this and then uh but it all it all it's all all right in the end. It's fine. And they raise yeah. up money for the eyes. So it yeah. is uh, it uh, it, it's quite funny that I thought espionage was a bit more cloak and dagger, but this film showed me that you could follow a car right behind. Yeah, yeah. And if you're an agent, you had to wear a suit and dark glasses. Yeah, so you don't get spotted. Yeah, and you had to run in fours. Yeah, yeah. And um, basically, the... if, there was, if, there, if there was a dead drop, yeah. You didn't have to really have to hide. You had just had to uh, stand in a park with uh, some balloons. Yes, as long you, uh, the only thing you have to make sure there isn't an old woman nearby who sees you touch calls you a pervert. Touch your breast, <laughs> calls you a pervert. As long as that you're golden. Um, which, which that was one of the indelible uh, memories. I remember. I remember laughing at that at ten years old. Right. I laughed at that at forty-four. <laughs> So right, no, yeah, yeah. no development. Because I, I understood the irony <laughs> and the yeah, yeah, it was great. No, no personal development whatsoever in the intervening. No. 
yeah. you know, the only way that would, that seems to be better if someone would have farted. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, and of course, we shouldn't forget to mention uh, one scene towards the end where someone wasn't paying attention, very, very visible boom mics, right? Like, I know sometimes when the thing hasn't been um, uh, framed properly in post-production, where they've got, you know, the open mat and all that, these things can sneak in, but these boom mics are well in there, right? Like, there's no way oh, they could... um, I, I missed that then. Where, oh, where, really? where, where, what? It's, yeah, well, it's at the end. Yeah, I, I was so engrossed. I was <laughs> in the so drama. engrossed. In yes. Garage. It's where the kids have been caught and they're basically negotiating in the big room with the Washington people. There's like, yeah, there's... there's uh, okay, okay. It's all over the place, yeah. Uh, um, fuck, I'm going to I'm gonna have to rewind that now and laugh for this. <laughs> so, I mean, yes. So what was the... before? What was the line of dialogue that was so quotable uh so i remember so when they're in the uh in the corridor and they're like my 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 parents are, our parents are gonna kill us fucking blah 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 mm. and one goes oh my father's gonna kill me and the one turns around and goes he can't kill you you outrank him because he was made because they had sold all these secrets he was made like a, a soviet general or whatever but I, uh, but I remember that from being yes. 10 years old. Being, oh, that's clever. I can just imagine you dropping that one on the schoolyard and everyone just, what the fuck? <laughs> Tumbleweeds rolling in the park. I mean, absolutely. But no, maybe I didn't say it out loud, but mentally I've used that a couple of times. Going, oh, yeah, yeah, you, can't, you can't do that because you, you are ranking. Mm. Yeah, comedy gold, no doubt. Um. Well, it wasn't common, but fucking hell, it wasn't. It didn't die a death like that either. <laughs> um, yes, and it's all the romance kind of. It's funny as well. The one thing I noticed at the very, very end when the two leads get together, um, you can kind of because they're that age, right? You can kind of tell by the end of the film they've grown Not up much quite a bit from the beginning, right? Yeah, I think they were thirteen at the beginning of production, but they're probably sixteen at the end. Because you know. I know they're adult, but they're, but at that age you you grow so quick, right? And it's visible, right? You could tell, which actually works to the I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> which which kind of um, yeah, well that makes sense why the hand puppet's gone. He's that age, right? He's like just discovered wanking, so he's like, oh, hang on, I'll throw this away. <laughs> Much more fun. <laughs> um but yeah, so so that's kind of a nice little authentic touch in a way. So yeah, I suppose objectively, I mean it's not a bad little kids espionage film from the late 80s. I th I feel it would be mean to dump. I mean, I didn't particularly enjoy watching it, but that's because a man, a 45-year-old man, shouldn't be watching Zits, basically. Okay, okay, okay. So you're let's 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 make a, a line of this film would for me now. Do you remember the dirt bike kid, for example? Right. Remember that? Vaguely, so yeah. So it, it would go in by the, the, I know, a, a, a scrambler uh, comes to life and the kid becomes fucking amazing at riding a bike or whatever. I can't remember if he, I haven't seen it for 20 years, but I think he solves crime or he's done some think, kind of thing. But I think it, Peter but Purvis I, I think, turns up, doesn't he, with the scoreboard at the, at the beginning, at the leaderboard. Peter Purvis turns up and says, dirt bike kid from Cheshire, uh, uh, he's at number two. Uh, no, 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 Peter oh. Purvis was there because the guy didn't oh. fall off. Oh, right, okay, sorry. Yeah, there wasn't enough uh, yeah, child cruelty in the to, to get to give old Pete. Uh, but you, you, you could, you, to quantify this film, you could go Zitz, uh, you could go Dirt by King, hmm. you could do uh, Goonies, you could do The Go Kids, Flog Dreaming, right. you could do, right. you could. I would say it's all of these films of coming up on future shows, by the way, probably. Oh, there we go. Yeah, but no, it's I would I would shoehorn that right in, and I remember it's uh, I think Big Trouble in Little China was one of those Saturday morning things that I would watch as well. But right. that is obviously for a, for a higher or uh, older audience. Yeah, but it was just 
it's an hour and a half or whatever it was, 90 minutes, 95 minutes of just, I mean, it, production value, yeah, it wasn't fucking the best, but it was, I mean, it, it got me through my Cocoa Pops or whatever it was. Right, right. Um, well, Obviously, you don't agree because now you're watching well, it. But I, but well, the thing I is, I didn't see it at the time. I, 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 yeah, I've got a rose tinted glasses over it because I remember getting it. I, I recorded it. I had it on VHS. You know, I probably watched it midweek as well as not, you know, fucking Saturday morning as well. But it, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of other things from that era. It, it was fake and shit. But in saying that, subsequent films after that, like, I don't know, I, I never watched Spy Kids or whatever, but they all seemed crap in comparison because they were, like, maybe overproduced. So it was just too much. These, these felt like stumbling kids, not mm. sure what the fuck they were doing because the production was bad and it came across better than what it should have, if you know what I mean. Right. You mentioned Cocoa Pops. Uh, I remember the... In our school, I think... The, the parody version the kids would sing was something like, I'd rather have sex with Samantha Fox, but I'll have a bowl of Cocoa Pops. Oh, yeah. D -d 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 if you remember the Cocoa Pops, uh, it was like a monkey, wasn't it? Yes, which is which is a very good euphemism. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um. Yeah, so no, no, obviously this film meant a lot to you because you grew up watching it over and over again, which also brings me to the point. I think um, this is not, I think this is very specific to you. And apart from kids getting up early enough to watch it on Sky, but I don't think this is necessarily a well remembered film in general. I think the reason it went to Sky quite so early was I don't think it did much business. Right? I don't think many people have actually seen Zits to this day. There's no home video release on disc or anything like that right it's we watched it on youtube it's a it's a, a, i don't think that many people certainly not you know not goonies or something like that, but not even like some of the other things you mentioned i i'm not sure how widespreadly seen zits was in its day have you yeah been to um, zits I'm, fans over the years i'm i mean i don't think no I mean, and how I've, many people uh, were at that Zitz convention you went to last year? Two. I mean, uh, it was a, it was a different type of crowd. <laughs> right, right. No, it was, but um, it was all, I, I, it, was I, all you, it was all pedos who were hoping to see that little girl, and they were disappointed yeah, was, that she'd grown up. Yeah, yeah. But the um, I don't know. You you do more research than I do on this, obviously, but. Um, we all know the, the Latvian, Russian kind of go-to actor. Yes, I don't although know... no one knows his name. That's the thing. I don't look up his name. I just recognise the face. I didn't go, oh, Elia Baskin. I just knew the face, right? And in 88, I'm not sure if he had yet become the face, right? I think... Yeah, I, I, le <laughs> I, I researched a little bit of it prior to coming here, talking to you now. And Ned Vaughan who was like the main ginger protagonist kid. I that's, mean, he's that's the rescue. Hang on. You got oh, to fuck. fuck you. Yeah, 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 you're right. No, the no, one, but, in, uh, Devin Rattray, I think, is the one in this who seems to have gone on to have been in more things, right? He, I can't remember which kid he is, but he's he's the one who seems to have gone on to have a... Oh, right, because I, I, I want to yeah. know who did or did not I mean, that girl, she was, whatever she was, she seemed to... She kept busy, it seems. Yeah, yeah, she she, she held the camera. She she was um, good enough to essentially steal the limelight every time she was in, in the right. scene. Right. But I wasn't sure then if she actually kicked on. I mean, I remember the, the old FBI agent or the fucking government agent, whatever it is, I remember him from stuff, but... No one else really stood out and said, oh, yeah, I made a career since. And I've seen a lot of shit, but no, I didn't recognize anybody else then. 
the thing is as well i think both of us a bit of a blind spot for us is we don't watch that much um episodic television right and i think that's where a lot of people end up in right is yeah on episodes of name that show you know, shows that you've never even heard of right but but uh have their fans and and some people you know they have you know they were on like a short lived show like i don't know 13 14 episodes or something but they were in every yeah. single episode and for people who love that show if there's a cult following that's a name right that's like oh yeah and for the rest yes. of the world who didn't catch that show you're like who the who the fuck is that right um yes absolutely um so anyway i think that's uh, that's about it for zits i mean I I would recommend it if you're a ten year old with Sky Movies, who likes getting up early in the morning. Uh, other than that, less so. But that's just because it's not a, really a film for a forty five year old man. Um, I suppose for its target. Well, audience, it's a film for a forty five year old for a forty five year old man with a predisposition. Yes, who still lives in the mother's basement and, uh, yeah, all that. So, But we don't want to encourage that kind of behaviour and we'll end up... No, no. There'll be red flags. So we'll just say, no. stop that! Don't yeah, do we, that. Don't, we, we, we don't mean all, We don't want more people like you, Clive. Ah, that was a low blow. Oh, God! <laughs> right then. Uh, right, one, um, well, so I will say this: you were saying we're quantifying. Hang on, Mahon, it's coming up now. It's gonna time out soon, so I'm gonna have oh. to. We're gonna have to do. All right, I'll send you an invite then. So, so you were talking about um, comparing things. So yeah, I would say Zitz is actually probably a better film than this next one we're going to be talking about. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's okay. not, I mean, it's not a slick. I mean, it's a different caliber of film uh, in that regard. But you know, uh, incredible. But comparatively, it's um, no, it's not a very, it's not a very good film. I, I don't think anyway. So yeah, so this is the rescue from uh, 1988, directed by Ferdinand Fairfax, who's uh, from the UK, made a lot of telly, including that. TV movie, uh, spy, spy master, no, spy maker, the secret life of Ian Fleming, which I've not seen. Oh, yeah. no, uh, no, no, he also, he also directed episodes of, and I'm sure you remember this show from back in the day, which is one of those shows like I had zero interest in as a kid, although probably still watched every fucking episode, but might think is more interesting now. Jeeves and Worcester with um, Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie. Yeah, I fucking hated that film anyway, uh, program anyway. Yeah. Anyway, he directed... No, that, that, that. that was uh, Jeeves and Worcester. Was a, that was a Sunday night telly. Yes, very much so. And um, uh, being in my household, I wasn't allowed to watch television later anyway. And that was... I think it was nine o'clock on a Sunday. Yeah, but so, it, yeah, I, I, I didn't come across it that often, but the clips I saw, it looked obviously it, it didn't uh flutter my bucket. So um no, I wasn't uh I wasn't a fan. Um yeah, uh, we you lucky viewers, we've just come up with a new saying. I don't think that's ever been said in the history of the world before. Flutter my bucket. No, that didn't I, I don't think it fluttered teenage boys buckets right it wasn't what we wanted it was part of the sunday night graveyard like oh for fuck's sake what's ah oh, songs of praise oh for fuck's sake yeah oh what's next oh no oh. there was later the songs of praise jesus was still was like a nine o'clock yeah but it was a continuum of tdm it was like sunday nights were designed to i don't know maybe just to make you go to bed early so you'd wake up and go to school like refreshed but a fucking but, but I'm guessing summer wine. But, but saying that we could probably watch it now and think, uh, it's it's the trouble is it was Hugh Laurie and uh, Stephen Fry and yeah. they were kind of Oxbridge people, so maybe the humour was a little bit above us. 
being at that age also. Well, yeah, I don't think we were... We weren't craving for P.G. Woodhouse adaptations as teenage boys. I know it might be slightly more... Inter- Similarly, I remember another thing, I a bane of my existence on Sunday nights back in the day, which I think I might get on with a bit more now, was Poirot with David Suchet. That used to come on. Oh, like, oh for fuck's sake, it's fucking Poirot again. But I might actually... Oh, it's Poirot it. or Inspector Morse, so we can get uh, on a lot of those. Inspector Morse or what's the other one? White Cliff and he <laughs> fucking all out of the shit. Yeah, yeah. Which is probably more but, but, cozy, interesting. I mean, when when you're kids, you couldn't give a shit about that because you wanted Taggart because that was the real thing. That was proper. Fucking... Yeah. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because <laughs> it was by been a murder. Yeah, there's been a murder, and yeah, he was <laughs> tough as nails, wasn't he? He was like. Yeah, you didn't want to fuck with him. No, no. He was like, yeah, he was like, I guess, the inherited um, the traits of the Sweeney, right? Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the only good thing... He, he, he was John Thor without being John Thor. The, the only good... Yeah, because he'd mellowed by that point, right? He was like, John yeah. Thor passed the baton on to Tag. Yeah, because John Thor was driving around the Jag then instead of fucking Capri <laughs> like he did in the Sweeney. <laughs> Um, I have to go back. I've actually, I have to go back and watch the Sweeney. Actually, um, anyway, the one, the only good, the only bright light I remember about Sunday. Well, there was two things in the same slot, right? Um, Sunday nights. The one thing that maybe you would love to stay up for them. I don't know. Was Spitting Image was Sunday night. No, no, no. I never came across that because Spitting Image was ten o'clock on a Sunday. Yeah, or maybe even ten. And lo and behold, if yeah. I was still up and about at ten o'clock. Um, yeah, I'd be hopping around after having um, a, g- a damn good thrash in. Right, right. So, yeah, no, I was a uh, spitting image. I was like, I loved spitting image. And then when spitting image was off in the same slot, I think it might even have been 10.30 because it would have been after the 10 o'clock news, ITV. Uh, yes, I remember yes. they used to show films as well from 9 to 10. There'd be the ten o'clock news, and then they'd show the second half of the film. Yeah, and it was the ten o'clock news on a Sunday though. I don't know if they showed it on a Sunday. Ah. I don't know if that was a ritual or not. Oh yeah, because Saturday night didn't have that break either. No, no, it was weeknights because I remember because they were very frustrating because even though I was allowed to stay up later than you, I wasn't allowed to stay up much later than ten thirty. So I'd watch the first half of that film, get you know involved, and then I'd have to go to bed. It was very annoying. I have to tape the second part if it was anything. Good. But the other thing that was in the Saturday uh, Sunday night slot when Spitting Image wasn't there, the New Statesman. Now, again, I didn't come across that. And unfortunately, very recently, I've been going over old um, Rick Mail stuff. Right. Alan um, Stard, right? Yeah. I, he, I think he's recognised now more of a genius than, than right. what he was. Yes, yeah, yeah, I agreed. And in the case of New Statesman, he's definitely better than the material, I think. Um, in retrospect, <clears throat> if I rewatched New Statesman. It's not that good. But you remembered it when you were a kid because it was a little bit ruder and swearier and other things. And it had like a little bit of go in it every now and again. Or, and, and of course, again, Alan is a bastard. I never saw it, but. The um, the ITV were genius in the fact that they would show clips as a promo to entice you to watch it. Mm. And they used to use, uh, I think one time he was arguing with someone in um, Borough Market and he grabs a fish and slaps him on the face, mm. which was slapstick fucking gold back then. Mm. And mm. I remember watching, I really want to watch that show. I never got on to it. So yeah. I have to put my, 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 uh, that on my list, actually. Yeah, it doesn't hold up, I don't think. But, but it was, I mean, also as well, you know, a show basically about a Tory politician being a total fucking asshole goes down well in 80s South Wales, right? I mean, uh, I mean, it would go down well in this particular political climate as well, I think. Yeah, no, unfortunately, I think some of our hood, though, it, it might have, might have, might have gone, um, might have fallen under Nigel Farage's spell in the interim, though, right? So, 
Uh, well, after I'll have to rewatch it and actually um, give my uh, ten pence worth then. Mm. Um. Anyway, I got ten pence as a fortune back in those days. You could have got um. Ten, ten Harry five, five flying saucers. Yeah, uh, yeah. Those are the days where you could sell fucking paper sherbet wrapped in paper to kids. Just yeah, to play and, and, and not and not have, have parents worry that it was LSD. <laughs> um, right. So the rescue, um, yeah, by this uh, written by the two people, Jim and John Thomas. I'm sure he was pleased he was named that as a child. Uh, who wrote a Predator just the year before this? Really? Yeah, that was their big hit. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. They, so use we... Their, they use their money well then. Yeah, yeah. So we got some more army brats here. So in this case, they're stationed in South Korea. Um, a American submarine sinks just off of the coast. So they send a SEAL team to rescue the captain who's gone down to the sub and, of course, make sure that the technology doesn't fall in the hands of the filthy communists. And while they're out there... The communists, the... communists. They're cunts, and they're them communists. And then the Koreans come, the North Koreans, and they, and they, yeah, they kidnap them out of international waters. Um, but despite all that, Allegedly. yes, Washington bureaucracy doesn't allow uh, James Cromwell, who is one of the most visible uh, cast members here, doesn't allow him to send in, you know, uh, doesn't Chuck Norris doesn't get deployed. So no. It's up and to James, and James Cromwell can't leave the base because he's teaching pigs, <laughs> right? So it's up to the kids. It's up to the kids, the army brats of the kidnapped, uh, in, including Edward Al Albert plays the main one, right? And uh, Kevin Dillon is yeah, yeah. So so the they get kidnapped. There was supposed to be a rescue mission which yeah. gets cracked, and the kids get wind of it, and then they decide to go themselves because yeah. you know. They've had years of training and behind yeah, well, enemy lines and weapons and all that shit. They've seen a young eagle a few times on video, right? And and they're like, yeah, we've got to go in there. Kevin Dillon, uh, same year he was in the Blob remake, uh, which is a good film. Oh, this is a big year for him then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was I, he bigger I than his brother been at this point? No, I don't think he was ever bigger than his brother. Because his brother was like Drugs the Cowboy. So was that the same time? No, uh, well, Drugs the Cowboy was 89, but Matt Dillon would have been famous for years prior to that, right? Oh, because the Outsiders. Yeah. And... yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, I, met, I, 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 met, I, met, I met him in New York uh, outside Joe's Pizza, actually. Which one, Matt or Kevin? Matt. Oh, yeah. How was he? Uh, it was fine. He 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 looked perplexed because a homeless guy was shouting at me <laughs> because I was laughing with someone about a joke. But as the homeless guy was walking past, he tripped over the curb, right? And fell because I was laughing at my friend's joke, right? He thought I was laughing at him, so he uh -huh. came over the stop on me. And uh, yeah, and Matt Dillon was just there in the window of Joe's Pizza, <laughs> eating his pizza, and he's going. I I wonder how this is going to turn out. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. Uh, anyway, anyway, that that, that 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 could be edited. <laughs> no, no, that was a fun anecdote. I enjoyed that. Although I don't know if it counts as meeting Matt Dillon. Oh no! no after that, we had a bit of a. Like, uh, uh, retort about oh well how was that it was this and you there but it wasn't like we sat down and had a meal together. Oh, was he we just... shouting at you through the window of Joe's Pizza? Or did he come out or did you go in? Or so Joe's Pizza is is like a pizza place where you can sit in the window. It's like a it's like a bar fucking like seating where you can eat looking out on on the pavement sidewalk. Where, where is this? In New York. Okay. So I was outside eating my pizza on like a fucking like stand-up table. So we we're sharing like a window. I see. And then, I yeah. See. So he, he's on the inside, I'm on the outside. Because, you know, class. Right. 
Well, this was the opportunity as well. Don't ask me. You could have hey, Kev, tell me, uh, Matt, Matt, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did, did Kev enjoy your, the yeah. viewers? Was your brother more famous than you in 88, do you reckon, Matt? Uh, and then he would have given you... Well, the you know what? Of... When it came to an, a homeless pseudo in, uh, in uh, you know, punch up, uh, I should have I should have gone, hang on, hang on, smelly guy. Yes. I'm just going to ask the guy a question. I'm going to talk to the homeless guy. Hey, boom. Thanks. <laughs> Here all week. <laughs> if you've noticed, Matt Dillon has never done a TV commercial for deodorant. I'm just saying. Is it a coincidence? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, yeah. no. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it all makes sense, though. So, um, yes. So they decide, okay, let's get in there. We've seen Iron Eagle. We've seen Chuck Norris films. We can get, we don't have to wait around for Washington. We're going to steal a boat and go up. I, I assume they go up the Yellow Sea side and they go into North Korea uh, quite easily. They just wear some like straw hats and no one spots them as being outsiders. Um, Absolutely. I wore a straw hat the other day and people thought I was Korean. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's my trick as well for for blending in uh, in Korea town. Um, so we got Kevin Dillon, uh, the aforementioned Ned Vaughan, who isn't in Zitz, he's in this, who's a bit, he's a bit like, um, he's a bit Eric Stoltz, isn't he? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I look at him and I don't know if he was cast because he was a uh, bag and basement, Eric Stoltz, maybe? Right. The B.Y. Stoltz. The B.Y. Stoltz, yes. Because, let's face it, but it, but in this you know, this was eighty eight, they could have had Stoltz cheap because he was just bounced from back Back to the Future, so they could have had him. What was he in? Well, well, I, I was, yeah, I, well, some kind of wonderful was the year before. Oh, it was year after some kind of wonderful. I'm pretty sure it was eighty nine. Was it? I thought it was eighty seven. Because, because Back to the Future was eighty seven. No, eighty eight. But he was on principal film for that for the first six months. So you'd been bounced from that. Yeah, that was probably back in eighty four, I'm guessing. But he was on he was photographed for that. Uh, yeah. Maybe then, maybe. Yeah. I think some kind of wonderful and then yeah, the year after this he would have been, of course, in that other timeless classic, The Fly Two. No, you would have been in mask before that. Yeah, yeah, before. But after, what I'm saying is after yeah. the rescue, he would have been in the fly to um, with uh, your favorite Daphne Zuniga, I think was in that. Well, well, this Ned guy was in Fly Two. No, Eric Stoltz. Oh, oh Stoltz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daphne Zuniga. Oh, oh, bucket more red. She's yeah. Well, speaking she of people, bucket. she yeah. would have floated the bucket then. <laughs> yes, the flood of the bucket. Yes, indeed, as we all say. Um, so. Speaking of bucket fluttering as well, back in the day, uh, one of my favourites was uh, Christine Harnos is the chick who goes with them, right? And uh, yeah, I was trying to figure out who she, what she's, uh, she's basically uh, a B.Y.'s version of uh, Phoebe Cates. Yeah, actually, that's not a bad call. Yeah, yeah, I remember her from uh, a few years after this, she was in a film called Cold Dog Soup. Uh, starring Frank Whaley, which turned up on late night Channel Four, and I was okay. at the right age, so I remember uh, she she kind of plays quite a sexy character in that. So I remember Christine Hanos from that. Uh, apparently, she did, she was a model prior to this film. Was that like she she uh, she was she did some modelling here in Japan actually? Apparently, um, so yes, yeah, so off they go to North Korea, which is seems to be just full of idiots who can't catch a bunch of children. Um, and um, yeah, I, I think the Koreans in this film were taught by the stormtroopers how to shoot. Oh, yeah? They're just missing everything. Right, right. right. Uh, and they're aided by a Hong Kong actor, Melvin Wong. Um, he helps them with his moustache. Incredible. Incredible. And uh, it's all shot in New Zealand as well, apparently. Uh, all these films, believe it or not, they didn't actually go to the DPRK. Uh, they they shot in New Zealand. 
and then fuck knows what happens. I can't remember. The, and then they they go down a big water pipe. At the end. Oh, the, um, could I forget? I, 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 before you say that, I, I yes. did read up on this one. I mean, I did pseudo research. So the set was untouched until they went back. Um, they used a bit of the set or the location for Lord of the Rings and something else. Fuck. Anyway, basically, the area was untouched. And, it, and it's uh, designated like film area. Right, yeah. When Lord of the Rings came to town, they were like, Struth, this is going to be bigger than the rescue. <laughs> yeah. do, we get, do we get rid of that water slide? <laughs> because there were some Australians there. I, I'm, sh- I, I'm sure the New Zealand accent is a bit of a weak. It's beyond our means, I think, to even do it. Uh, it's, more, it's more nasal. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be bigger than the rescue. <laughs> but I remember watching that was another Saturday morning show watch, and I think every child who watched that wanted to go down that water slide. Yeah, it's very good news, isn't it? Um, absolutely, yeah, yeah. This one definitely would have been with this. More people saw this beyond seeing it on Sky Movies early in the morning before tuning in to watch Five Star get. Um, insulted by uh, Brian on like, oh yeah, yeah. Um, also, with- but 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 I will I will say with this, this um, this is how censorship uh, censorship is stupid at home or yeah more now around the world. People are blown up in this, but they still. I mean, but these kids are going into intense war situations trying to rescue their fathers, and they still only can say damn. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's very, yeah, it's very much, it's very much uh, kid, kiddie aimed, right? It's, it's for, it's for the kids who couldn't get in to see Rambo First Blood Part 2, or, you know, and in that way, it's quite clever targeting that audience, I think, except it didn't work, because I think it was quite a big flop, I think, um, it cost more than you might think this film, actually. I think it was like 50 million or something. Just fairly big. What, one, one five million? Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. I looked it up, yeah. I know, it's surprising, right? I mean... Because there was a cameo by one of the fathers. Well, two two of the fathers were pretty fucking established. Well, Edward um, Albert and maybe Charles Hayde, maybe Tim- Timothy Carhart. The, the credit that is interesting is, so that you know the kid who gets left behind, the electronics expert who hilariously dresses in drag as his mother? Yeah. He, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's Mark Price. So he was the kid. He was the star of that horror film Trick or Treat. Do you remember that? Where he plays his records backwards and summons the devil or whatever the fuck. Uh, that's him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. No, but but there, as you said, the, the, there's notable actors in it. There's, you know... Um, but I wouldn't have thought it was 15 million. Bloody hell. I, I think that's what I read. You know, that's why it flopped, right? Because... And I can see why they might have think it because it, if you look at it from that perspective, it's kind of smart, right? It's like, you know, all those kids they really want to go to a theater to go and see, but they, you know, their parents won't take them or whatever. Let's make one aimed squarely at those kids. It's kind of you'd think they would have pulled it off, but for whatever reason, people weren't. In. I'm wondering if in 1988. Especially kids like our age are a little bit older. I don't think they would have necessarily registered North Korea as a call. Like if they'd have made this about Russia, kids would have uh, heard that. I think. Or try, try and go for the Wolverine kind of aspect. You mean? Well, and ju- yeah. Just in terms of, I think it's a very Red Dawn. The Red yeah, Dawn. Kind yeah, of exactly. Thing. It's a very identifiable. These are the villains, the Ruskies, the Soviets. You kids understood that without understanding complicated geopolitics, right? But I'm thinking when I was nine or whatever when this film came out, I don't know if I would have comprehended 
what North Korea was. In mm. fact, I think the rescue might have been the first time I'd heard of North Korea. I said, huh? What's that? And I, I don't think I would have. So I, I think that might be the thing is the North Korea angle. I don't think if kids would have un quite understood what that meant. Yeah, but also, in, in yeah, OK, the way you're saying that, they wouldn't have been able to go, this is 1988, the fucking treaty was 89. You couldn't have gone, oh, these bastard Russians then. Well, they did in zits, I suppose. Yeah, no, no, but 88 would have been, would have been like. 88, you would have still, you would have still, you would have still, that would have still been a thing, I think. You could still paint the, the Russians as the bad guys. Because Hollywood hmm. always slightly behind the, you know, especially back then, like, they wouldn't have been on the cutting edge of, like, you know, what was going on, the you know, the political winds of change and all that, right? As, of course, David Hasselhoff sang so movingly about, oh, no, that was the Scorpions, wasn't it? Um, wings of... I think uh, Scorpions, Scorpions are Wings of Change. Yeah. Uh, I think I think Hasselhoff just uh, wanted to break down the wall. I think if I remember correctly, the lyrics to Scorpions Wings of Change goes When you're standing down from David Hasselhoff, you don't want to experience the winds of change. <laughs> because they used to call him Let Them Off Hasselhoff. <laughs> <laughs> because his flatulence was not. Yeah, oh, I mean, I mean, it's it, it's all that seafood he had, you know. Well, yes, Erika Eleniak had it in her contract when she was on Big One <laughs> <laughs> that she could have a she could have a nose nose plugs in between scenes. Erika Eleniak had it had it in a contract that she had she could have the winds of change at any time. Uh Interestingly as well, bringing it around to Kevin Dillian again, uh, in the Blob remake, the Blob at one point emerges from Erika Eleniak's tits. Which, um, for those of a certain demographic, will know uh, that's the bit where your under siege VHS would have suddenly started developing snow when she jumps out the cave. Uh, I mean, I mean <laughs> ironically enough, same kind of symptoms during Under Siege. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do uh, do. To watch that Under Siege again, especially that cake scene. I remember see, yeah, being quite... Uh, saw, seeing that in the cinema and remembering that all the way home. <laughs> and you couldn't revisit yeah. it on YouTube back in those days, so it was imprinted. No, no, no. Anyway... Um, and yes. we can a little. Do do. Um, yeah. So so um, we also worth mentioning opening credits in that Oriental font of the eighties and some very Orientalist uh, theme kind of music as well. Right, puts you surprising. Actually, I, one thing I will say about this film because I remember kind of reading it somewhere. I was expecting this film to actually be a lot more casually racist. And it wasn't really. I mean, beyond the American kids, you know, being smarter than everyone else in the known world, you know, that that's, you, you expect that, take that for granted. But um, it's it wasn't, you know, there wasn't any slanty-eyed jokes or jokes about eating dogs. or there was nothing like that. It was quite, you know, it was relatively respectful. It was all encompassing, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I remember, again, this was another Saturday morning show, uh, film watch show. And the indelible kind of image was the fucking kid with uh, the Bruce Springsteen shirts, yeah. which uh, quantified the film in. Five seconds, actually. This is the kind of thing that radicalizes people. I I was ready to join Al Qaeda to watch in this because I hate fucking Bruce Springsteen anyway, but but this fucking him on the t-shirt of the American flag and oh, as the boss and it's the Americans and all that. That's just like yeah, fuck. Find me a plane. I'm flying into the World Trade Center right now. This is just radicalizing stuff, isn't it? 
horrible. horrible. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's the. I didn't realize it was that polarizing, but okay, maybe. Yeah, I don't think I'm overstating the case. No, but I even remember then when the whole kind of the kid does the whole spring scene. And I remember going, oh no, it was going so well. It was going so well until <laughs> that point. It wasn't going that badly, let's put it that way. But Oh no, they just basically as a child now, I just watched them go down like a 200 foot water slide. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I want to do that shit. Yeah. I want to do that. And then they steal an aeroplane and it doesn't quite fucking get there. And then and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's reserved no. for, for a child. And um, I suppose it also helps that neither of us like Bruce Springsteen particularly. I, you know, so yeah. Actually, as well, and if you notice, I was watching this time the water pipe because they don't actually show that much. They just show the bit at the top, and they go, oh, and but they don't do the hole all the way down, like Romance in the Stone or Goonies or something like that. They just have these exterior shots of the pipe. And if you see where the pipe actually meets the ground. That's a oh, they'd be dead. Bad they'd be hell. Dead. It's not an ew at all. Yeah. They'd be splattered, and then you'd rather than them popping out the bottom and surprising the Korean uh, uh, women washing their clothes, there'd just be a like a pile of guts coming out. <laughs> and the guts, or, or there'd be a lot of Korean chiropractors at the bottom going, "Oh yeah, we can charge you at your <laughs> national health rates at this." Um. Yes, so, um, so yeah, nostalgia that's what those two were. There was nostalgia, were nostalgia. yeah. I think the rescue for me was maybe I don't think I saw this until a few years later. Um, maybe when it turned up on television, it might have been on ITV or something. So, I think I was because I was one year older than you as well, and it was a few years later than you see it on Sky. So I think I was just a little bit out of the range for it to work as nostalgia for me. And I didn't see Zits at all back in the day. So I think these were two stronger nostalgia hits for you than they were for me. But the rest, the rescue was very much, it echoed um, Toy Soldiers. I think it was a precursor for that. Uh, the, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah. Well, I suppose the lineage is, yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? It's, it's, it starts off. You get your uh, Chuck Norris and Sylvester Stallone, and then it gets watered down into Iron Eagle, and then it gets watered down further for children and teenagers. Right. So it's kind of interesting to see how you know that's that's very much. Uh, we grew up seeing a movie trope mutate in real time while we were children. Right? That's something we are very familiar with. We know how that works. Yeah, I think I think whoever was making these things, we were growing up as they were, you know, growing as well. So yeah, you and I, we we were on the cusp of stuff earlier than most. And yeah, I think we what was Toy Soldiers? Toy Soldiers was 99. Oh, no, 91, wasn't it? Yeah, later, yeah. Yeah, 91. So, basically, we saw a lot of shit like this. And, um, yeah, we, we were on that wave, on that cusp, yeah. you know? And, of course, worth reiterating that the first Toy Soldiers, the 84 one as well, was quite an early entry into the kind of... Um, earlier than you might have thought, right? Is that is right up there the same year as Missing in Action before uh, First Blood Part 2. Um, so they, they, that yeah. was the early example of them of, of them kind of uh, I mean this is almost like oh the dads are going to watch this we'll give this to the kids so the dads will watch this and pseudo enjoy it too probably I guess uh, although I can't imagine my dad would have enjoyed this much I don't think he ever watched it I don't think I yeah well your, your, your dad was a Bruce Springsteen fan so was what? I uh, wasn't a Bruce Springsteen fan. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you, but you think about Middle America, fucking Pennsylvania, fucking all this kind of thing. You're like, yeah, 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 America, America, America. Yeah, this would have gone down a storm. You could have uh, put this in the background and no one would have back an eyelid. This this very much is you could put, uh, you know, the team America. America, fuck yeah, that's very much the soundtrack to yeah. that. Which I was kind of surprised, even though it was basically shit. I was kind of surprised how 
apart from the it was Bruce... neutral. It was neutral. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Apart from the Bruce Springsteen moment, it wasn't as out there flag waving as I thought it would be. Because, for instance, I remember one of the Iron Eagle films. I can't remember which one. I mean, that's quite. I mean, there's there's lines in that film. You know, things like "Let's get the towel headed bastards" or let's nuke that shitty South American, you know, it's, you know, it's yeah. straight out of Trump's mouth, right? Some of this stuff. It, he, loved, um, he loves the rescue, by the way, and the Iron Eagle films. I reckon these are, these are very... Oh, much he, wa he watches them a look before any I kind of... So. Uh, I got the best it. films. Have you seen The Rescue? Um, it's a classic. But do you remember, uh, do you remember Red Scorpion? Yeah, yeah, with Dolph. Yeah, yeah. With Dolph Lundgren, and I, I can't remember the old guy now, but he swears M it's M. Emmett Walsh. It's M. Emmett Walsh, right? From yeah, uh, he Spencer. swears essentially every fucking every the second, which I remember watching. I, I watched that countless times because I enjoyed the helicopter with the big fucking guns and yeah. Dolph Lundgren with the big fucking guns and. But I remember being off put by his. I mean, his vocabulary was fucking shocking. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I don't. Shy, I don't shy away from swearing, but I think he just ramped it up, and it was a very much an American in the desert oh. with, I don't know, fucking peasants or whatever, and he just swore all the time. But then again, I haven't seen that for. 25 years either so i don't know yeah no that's interesting i don't uh i don't recall i don't, i mean i remember him at walsh being in it because he's 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 on oh, no i remember there's a there's, there's an actual thing in it where they actually talk about his swearing ah, okay. And, it's, okay. and it's scripted and i'm and i even i was like well this is too much oh interesting um i might have to go back and watch red scorpion don't know if i'll go back and watch red scorpion 2 though um Oh, I, I don't think I ever fucking indulge in that. <laughs> you had your limits. Yeah. Dolph, Dolph was it, because he wasn't in the second one. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Dolph was my muse. <laughs> so there we go. Um, I hope this episode has fluttered your bucket. And um, we will be back with some more... Uh, bucket fluttering goodness in the next episode. I'm not quite sure what we're doing yet, but I'm sure we've got another couple of classics lined up. So, you know, this has been the Be Wise Chronicles, and why don't you be wise, be wise. and join us again next time. In the future. Cheerio.